territory being built and they will see um, the biggest monument to child labor, at least in Kent County. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I'm surprised that we weren't visited by uh, some of the- Yeah, nobody uh, ever objected. <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna go to the PowerPoint now and I think the first image will be a close up of your model. I, I don't know. If I have to go. Needed. I'm sorry. I have to go back to the share screen here a minute. You may notice that I'm the only intellectual here. I'm the one who has books behind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've got books behind me. <laughs> and M42's back there. And <laughs> there go. That was, I think, the first model that we made of the observatory. We had um, a, draw, a drawing of it, but we hadn't made anything. And so this has various things that were picked up. This, this uh, used to be for a toilet, a float for a toilet. And we were finding, using everything we could find to make this model. Crooked trees. Yep. <laughs> but uh, this this model was at the at uh, the museum for a long time, wasn't it? Nobody knows. <laughs> yes, it did. I remember it being at the museum when I was working there. Yeah. I don't remember exactly where, but it was in one of the one of the display cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dave, you need to go to full screen. There, there we go. go. Yeah. Uh, and there's the model. Yes. And the, we made the real um, doorway the way that looks. We, the, there's no excuse at all for the real thing being like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> OK, on to groundbreaking. This is to prove that I was there since the beginning of the project. Can you all hear me? Yes. 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 OK, good. And that's Jim Marin next to me. And uh, where you see the pipe in the ground, that is exactly where the pier of the Bohr Reflecting Telescope is. And notice the uh, lack of thick growth up there on the pinnacle of Kissing Rock Hill. So that was uh, probably um, a Saturday in about mid-July. And that rock hasn't moved one inch from when <laughs> it was taken. And Evie, aren't those the kids of the people that live next door, I believe? That's Mitzi and yes. Pam Talbot. OK, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I was leaving the uh, site and on my way home, and I saw these two kids sitting on the rock, and I quickly got out of the car and took this picture and it has become a classic. It appears just about everywhere in our various presentations. Uh -oh. The rock actually started out in the middle of Kissing Rock Road. And at some point they brought heavy equipment and pushed it off to the side. But I've seen pictures of it where it was right in the middle of the road. So the rock once was right in the middle of the road, is that correct? Yes. Where mm -hmm. the road is now. Mm -hmm. And the road so has flowed around it. But it hasn't moved anywhere since the time when we started right. to build the observatory. Right. And many photographs have been taken by it. Many coats of paint have been put on it. Mm -hmm. And still it is right there. <clears throat> and now uh, another tip of the hat to pretty much the, the founder of the Wien Observatory, which would be Ray Larson. He was a charter member of the GRAAA and uh, was not only uh, an officer, and I believe served at president back in the 50s, but was one of those people who really wanted to realize James C. Veen's dream of establishing an observatory. Keep in mind that James Veen was a co-founder of GRAAA, and Ray Larson was uh, one of his important lieutenants almost from the beginning. Uh, he came up with the first uh, set of prints for the observatory and the basic design that exists today. Uh, so he's actually the architect behind it as well. And 
ground the mirror for the original 12 and a half inch telescope, which you will see pictures of before too long, and uh, in his basement. His wife also ground that mirror. I'm sorry, Evelyn? He, his wife also ground that mirror. When That's right. His wife uh, worked very closely yeah. with him, didn't yeah. she? Yes. Yes, Dorothy. Dorothy was her name. Mm -hmm. yep. Another person who was quite fundamental would have been uh, Dick Balama, who is uh, kneeling there as the footings are being a, uh, put down. And Dick is still around, isn't he? And I know he was given oh, yeah. an invitation yes. to the event. I'm not quite sure who the person <laughs> with his back to us is, his backside no. to us. Uh, but you but notice think, on, the, on the side of the hill, of the, the cut, there, there are bird houses. We, we had to leave it for the one winter, and the birds, the, the um, bank swallows moved in <laughs> and dug uh, holes. But you're, you can see. I mean, could you get a little closer to the mic yeah. or, or move the mic? Um, yeah, we're the, having a hard time hearing you. The, the bank swallows with that, holes for, the, for their nests. And so when we came back in the spring, there were all these nests in the thing and we didn't want to disturb the birds. So we held off on some of the digging until they moved out. The digging was all done pretty much with human labor. Yes. yes. That hole that where the library is in the observatory was dug out by human hand with shovels. Children's human hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I think, I think you're right. It was mostly the kids. And yeah, notice the uh, form there with the rebar in it. This is, I, I think I can use my pointer here. Down right in this area here, is the first section of the pier above the four feet underground. So there's a base underground and then there's this section here. And Bob Moeller, do you remember uh, being participating in some of this? Oh yeah. Yeah, I was responsible for the dog leg in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> in the inner floor. Okay. <laughs> yes, which we had to do. I'll explain how that all happened. <laughs> Okay, and here is a very fine picture of Ray Larson, who is our straw boss, and uh, three gentlemen, uh, Tom Muller here. Uh, he uh, was one of the stalwarts on the project as one of those adolescents that <laughs> we talked about the slave labor. And Alex Morodsky, this gentleman right here, and I believe he's still around and we've invited him to the program. Hmm? Anybody have any idea who this is? No, do you? Um, I think Tom Strickland. This is right. probably one of our most distinguished alumni. This <laughs> is Tom Strickwerda, who went on to a, a career as a engineer and administrator with John Hopkins. He was involved in the flight path for the messenger to Mercury and even more significant New Horizons to Pluto. He was the lead person that got that New Horizons to where it was supposed to go. And he's a proud former member of the GRAAA and he will be back for our, for our celebration and will be speaking briefly there at, at, the, at the event on the 26th. I just got the confirmation from him today. That's what things look like in the autumn of 1966. That's, of course, the dome for the Bohr telescope, the 16 and a half foot diameter silo. And that's where the library is in the lower level. And this was to be the utility room over here. And we have not even begun to conceive yet of the main building, even though uh, the trenches are dug for the footings. So we had already worked over a year, over a year with donated cement blocks, adolescent labor, and some pretty amateur block layers. And this is all we had to show for us. We wondered if we'd ever realize 
the completion of our observatory. <laughs> Kevin, you're out there. Yes. <laughs> you can talk about this one. <laughs> well, that's me in the center there, hefting a block up on the uh, on the platform. And that might be Charlie Vandenhoek. That is. And that's and me, Ron Strauss, right there. There is he that is, the backside of okay. Ron Strauss. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that might be Roy Van Proy. Oh, that's Ron. <laughs> that's Ron? Yeah. Do you yeah. remember the occasion, Ron? Oh, uh, remember the occasion? Yeah, I, okay. Does your memory go back that far? Yes, yes, because I had an old green uh, army jacket my uncle wore in, uh, back in Korea. And so I was wearing his old jacket. And I was sure. giving the orders, is that correct? Oh, yes. But I was not about to go up on this rickety scaffold. <laughs> I sent the youngsters up there. <laughs> That's where the Myosha people would really have gotten on us, wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I actually, actually fell off one of those scaffolds once too. Did you? Yes, I did. I remember it was very important that when we left that we get those that top row of blocks covered up with the boards so the rain didn't go down inside them. That was right. our our last official act whenever we left there in the evening is uh, cover up all those open open holes. Yeah, that's an, a bit, bit of information I never remembered. Kevin, your, your memory is great. <laughs> we were getting there. When he got last to the last block. Um, we're, we're up at, to November now. We're two years yeah. into the project. Start, keep in mind, we started in the middle of the summer of 65. And at 67, at the end of the season, we had the two silos showing. And this is Gary. It's too, it's too bad Gary's not here. Isn't Gary here? No, he's not here. I got things to do at his expense this evening, including showing his old Ford. He always was driving old cars. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And that, that green one in the back, that was the museum car, wasn't it? Correct. A museum vehicle. You'd you'd yes, pick us all museum. up in that, take us out to the um the cement and block place there on 28th Street and pick up our load, then we come out to the observatory. Was that the was that the old international harvester? You remember the old international harvester, Jack? I do, yeah. I, I think that came afterward, and I do believe we have a picture of that in a, in a future slide. This predated the uh, old truck. I put a lot of miles on museum vehicles going back and forth to the work site. Yes. Hauling kids. <laughs> Who do we recognize in this group? Oh, yeah. Bob, Bob Harrison on the far right. Mm hmm. That would be Bob. And of course, Kevin, he's easy to come up with. This is Charlie. Charlie, Bill Waronko. Bill Waronko went on to be a captain in the Navy of a ship. And he will also be at our reunion. Oh, great. He just recently retired uh, running a business near Dixon, Illinois. I do keep in touch with him. He was, he was just a great kid. Um, I wondered if he'd ever make anything of himself because he was not, not he, he didn't have a, a very strong compass for what he wanted to do in life. But oh my goodness, once he caught fire, he became extremely successful in a lot of different ways. That's Tom Muller again, I remember. Now, Jim over here, the rest of them I'm having some difficulty with. Anybody else? Um, Norm Bobroff, Norman Bobroff. Oh, there we go. Boy, you and, do have a memory. And uh, Roy, I think it was Roy Van Proyen or Roy? Roy Van Huysen. Huysen. Roy that's Van Andy Huysen. out there? Yeah, that's, I remember yes, that's Roy. Roy Van Huysen. A little yeah. closer to the mic if you can, Sandy. Okay, Roy Van Huysen, um, Bob Ruff. Um, Norman, Norm. Norman. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure, he, this one, I'm not. I, know, I do know that the gentleman in the back uh, kept us supplied with alcohol. Oh. He had elderberry <laughs> wine on a very cold November day. Uh, that, 
Chuck Vandenhoek back there. Um, yeah, that's Charlie right here. Yeah, Kevin and um, you remember Bob. Um, Harrison. Harrison, yeah. On the far right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He went to school, he went to East with me. This is a, a good uh, lesson for the people who helped with the remake of the 16 inch dome, which we did last fall. This was the original installation in uh, spring of 68. So right after winter, the first thing we did over the winter, we raised the money for the dome and then we installed this dome. And then the other one too, they were both installed at the same time. Notice there's still no building between them. And now here's a quick story. It wasn't long after I dug this picture up that I was sitting in a, a Mr. Burger restaurant out on the East Beltline and a gentleman walked up to me and he asked me, are you Dave DeBryan? And I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, oh, okay, here comes something from the past. He says, you don't remember me, but I was one of the kids that helped build the observatory. And it happened to be this kid right here. His name was Jim Barber oh. as an adult. Hmm. And it was right hmm. after I had been working on these slides. Uh, this is when I originally put the program together a couple of years ago for, for promotional purposes. And my cousin Roger, uh, who I did invite to come tonight, but I see he's not on the on the queue there. Um, he helped also when we put the dome up with the Ash Dome people. That was a that was a really 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 big deal. There's Roger and I, Charlie, I think. How long did it take Dave to get the dome, the both both domes installed? <laughs> Probably about uh, two to three days. They all came in sections, as you saw from that, that image. And then uh, the technician uh, told us everything to do. But part of the contract with Ash Dome at the time was that we would supply labor. They only sent one person up here. And boy, have they held up well, because the people that were front, the same company still in business, but it's two or three generations later. And when they came up to do the redo recently, they they... They told us we had a 50 year old brand new dome. <laughs> they held up well. Notice uh, the lack of trees around, <laughs> yeah, around the, the, the perimeter there. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah. Notice also the driveway to the left that was terrifying. When people drove over the edge, they couldn't see where the road was. <laughs> yeah, that was a two track in the truest sense of the word. Quite some time. And this was a shortcut over here, mm -hmm. which is all forest now. Yeah. Yeah. And there is one of the most beloved oh, yes. that we ever had in the club. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody oh, yeah. would, uh, would, would argue that. Uh, absolute legend and somebody who we all looked up to, Percy Hawkins. Uh, Jack McCarthy, would you like to say a word or two about your introduction to Percy Hawkins? Yeah, I, uh, you're right. I mean, your description of him being a, a great individual, a, a real mentor, a real teacher. I mean, um, I can remember, I mean, the way he taught uh, Percy was he would tell stories. And, um, you know, there was a, a story and I don't remember. Oh, you're not going to tell that one, are you? <laughs> no, 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 not that one. Um, but there was a story about uh, he was he was uh, trying to explain that you know when somebody says well you just take a nail and and uh, pound it up and put it put it in there he went on and said well you know before you do that you have to have the design you have to get the measurements correctly you have to make sure it's uh, going to be level and make sure you, you have the right you know nail that you're going to use so you know one of the things he just taught myself and I'm sure many others was. You know, there's a there's a process here. It's not instantaneous. It takes time and it takes thought to get there. True enough, Bob. Do you have any comment, Bob Muller? <laughs> yeah, I know <laughs> quite a, quite well, quite well. Um, yeah, he was uh, always a fund of 
all sorts of uh, information. I remember one time where I, th I don't know if it was at the observatory or not. You know, he uh, started a, a wood screw with a with a hammer. He says, "Now this is a screwdriver." And he pulls out <laughs> a screwdriver, and this is a screw, a screw twister. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I have a quick one, Dave. Sure thing. When we were putting up the roof on the main building, he was in his element. Oh, and yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that, yeah. Jay. I remember that. There's exhausted. an image of that coming up. There's an image of that coming up. Yeah. When we were, we were exhausted, and he was dancing on two by six beams with nothing else, singing body. New Zealand drinking songs and calling us all weak and lazy. And I don't think he'd had a bit of alcohol in his system. Mm -hmm. That was just his personality. <clears throat> yeah. it, and he was such an inspiration to everybody. And uh, Percy uh, was a president of the club. In fact, he was president of the club the night I first came to a meeting, which was in 62 or 3, when I was... Uh, in my first year of college, I believe. And I came over as a guest and got introduced to him. And, and my goodness, the memory just lingered forever. He's just, once you met him, you never forgot it. And he was, a, he was a carpet, he was a teacher of manual arts, carpentry and so on. He, he said that, he often said that he would, he always took care of the forgotten kids. Mm -hmm. Percy lived, um, right up the street from my mom and dad when I was growing up and was part of this and um, I always I took the ride home with him um, when we were done for the day and we always had conversations that were more just about life and he gave me a lot of advice you know a 14 15 year old kid and he's you know giving me some good thoughts and good ideas and things to think about and uh Yes. I always respected him and, and liked that from him. Yes, uh, uh, he was a teacher in the truest sense of the word. Mm -hmm. he also and had I'm a, sure uh, that there are just scores of people who uh, remember him as being influential on in their lives, including me, for sure. He had a, he had a very lovely wife, Maureen, yes. I remember. Yeah. Uh, yes. mm -hmm. and they were just, they were true partners in life. And uh, it was, it was uh, one of those things where you... Uh, you know, you, you not only learn from Percy what he said, but you learn from Percy from watching him and, and seeing how he lived life. He also introduced me to Stonehenge. You remember? Can you can you get a little closer, Sandy? Oh gosh, that's a. Uh, he introduced me to Stonehenge. Right. And you made the model. I did. I, did. I really I stuck to that one. And in that project because I didn't know what I was getting into and it was a big one. <laughs> and that model stood in the museum for it was on display in the museum for quite some time. Howard Gooden who, hmm? who um, uh, installed the electricity so that it looked like the sun was rising over the hill stone. <laughs> mm -hmm. was um, we see two of our principal block layers here. This would be Percy and this would be Jim. They were the good block layers. The guy back here, he was still an apprentice. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have no idea who this is. Oh. <laughs> but I do know this gentleman. That's Jim. And you'll notice that we're now starting to get a building in between the two domes. We're still in the 1968. That was a year of frenzied activity. Starting with the domes that were placed on the building in April. And then we started laying the main uh, building. We had to pour the cement for the main floor, which you'll see in a minute. And here's another group photo. Um, Bill, Dave Meeker was his name. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is Barber, the gentleman that, that uh, Jim Barber. Mm -hmm. This guy, I'm not sure. Third one from the left? Yeah. Uh, Jeff, um, yeah, I'm drawing a blank. I had his last name, but I think his first name was Jeff. Okay. Um, here are the rash twins. The rashes, uh, yeah. 
Uh, are you still out there, Vince? <laughs> I think Vince had to go to his meeting. This no, no. Actually, I'm still here. I'm just. Uh, I'm. I'm very. Are you trying to figure talented. out which one is you? Well, I'm. I'm right next to you. Okay, this is Vince. Yep, and then you I still look to like that. Oh, you got to be kidding me! <laughs> you talked <laughs> yes. about you talked about your red hair, or you used to have red hair. Well, mine used Maybe to be hair too. Yeah, yeah, you did. <laughs> um, yeah, that's me, um, right next to you, and then my cousin Joe, and then my cousin Chuck is the one right next to him. Okay. And they have they always Percy taught us how to pull nails out of two by fours. And he always said, you boys don't know how to do it. And he would always say, just you got to put a two by four underneath the hammerhead and pull them that way. Yeah. And I, I have one confession I would like to make. Somewhere in the right corner where that ladder is, our, I don't know what we poured for cement that day, but there's three sets of initials in that cement. <laughs> oh, <laughs> naughty boy. I don't know whose they are. Okay, now I just lied too. <laughs> well, I just that we 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 were looking around and we put our initials in that corner, but it's probably a foot deep in sod right now. <laughs> They're still there, Vince. I would imagine, but under, under the, the concrete, because we're somewhere gonna down in the yes. that corner. There's Sandy, there. of course, right here, sitting next. Yep. To you. And I remember Stonehenge, Sandy. I remember that. <laughs> Well, I remember you kids, you, you lived way out there in, in Fruit Ridge yep. and you would, your parents would drive you in and drop the whole, the whole clan off and then come back and pick you up, wouldn't they? Yes, they would. Yeah. You, I, you're in a lot of pictures. Uh oh, here's the pouring of the concrete. See, that's proof. I did contribute some to the labor. <laughs> I didn't just supervise. I remember that was a very hot day and we had a finisher. We had a cement finisher that was coming after work to do the troweling. And once he got there, he just worked like a scared bunny because the cement was, was setting up so fast. So we're lucky we got a really good finished product because when the uh, ready mix truck comes, they just dump it and go and you figure out what to do with it. And you only got an hour to figure it out, or otherwise you lost it. Here was one of our, our meetings uh, at the observatory. We had a picnic. Here's Bob Moeller over here. Kevin, we never failed to recognize you. Tom <laughs> Muller. I'm not sure who this person is, but I do know this one. This is, um, oh dear, now the name is slipping my mind. John Holmquist, that okay, yep, mm -hmm. no, no, no. he was a I think treasurer during the time when we did this uh, project, and in just a very nice, nice man uh, who was kind of one of those uh, people that is just a stalwart in the operation, but not a real high profile individual. Kind of like Tom Good. Are you there yet, Tom? Do you fall asleep? Uh, I'm right here, right here. I, I would think of you as a John Holmquist, a modern day John Holmquist, kind of low key, but a real contributor. We got a lot of those. Tom is just one good example. This is Bill, Roy Van Heisen. I have no idea who's guy with the big dairy air. And here's the last block, yes. August, 1968. So here we're only into August, from April yeah. to August. We did all this work. I have a story about the last. Yes, tell your story, man. Yeah, I have. Yeah, um, a story. They finally put in the last block, and uh, when he um, right up here. So I'm trying to talk to the machine. Um, anyway, he then he had set up cups with um, uh, behind the observatory, uh, so that all the guys who were still working that last day. And he had brought one bottle of wine. And we arranged while he wasn't watching to pour all the glasses and hide them. And so when he said, uh, now we can have the wine. And I said, uh, I'm sorry, Dave, we were short of water at that last 
thing. We didn't want to go back to the house for water. So we used the wine for that. <laughs> and uh, for the mortar. He was uh, not happy. <laughs> so you have a remarkable gone. memory, I don't remember that. Yeah. Oh boy, I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's perpetrator, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I remember. <laughs> yeah, Aubrey, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. No, were you in the? You're not in the picture. That's Judy here. No, that's Judy. I, that's back Judy. There. I'm not oh, in. Mike's picture. in there. There's Mike. Yeah, Mike's there. Um, Bob and Judy and uh, yeah. Dave, who's the guy next to me over on the left, second from the left? That's the mystery one. Jeff, somebody. Jeff okay. Hendricks. Hendricks. There you go. Okay. Yep. Yeah, he was quite active in the club for quite a while, for a while, and then he just disappeared. So he's missing the reminiscences. Here we go. So this was when Percy Hawkins outlasted everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and we did that in one day. I think we did most of that roof, didn't we? Yeah. Percy had At least we had it all roughed in. And here's Percy over here. Right Chris had laid it out and marked where each uh, board had to yeah. go. Yeah, to he was probably that well in right. the 70s at this point. But there he was, right in there with yeah. us. Yeah. Although as great as he was that day, his wife uh, told me that he was dead the next day. You know, he was <laughs> <in> such a <laughs> <track>. <laughs> I do remember one time I called him up. This is kind of serendipitous because I, I called and um, wanted him to come out and help with a project. This is after the, the roof raising. This was later on when we were doing the finish work. And he was such a, a, a fastidious craftsman that we really needed his skills. And I talked to uh, Reen and she, she says, well, Dave, I need to tell you something. I said, you got to be careful now. You you can't ask him to do too much because he's almost 80. And uh, yet he was out there well into his 80s, I think, helping oh, us. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack, you weren't quite on the scene yet, but you were getting close, right? You had. Yeah, I, I think I started in uh, maybe the spring of 69. 69. So this is still 68 going here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is later 68. There's the rash boys doing the gopher jobs. There's Kevin up on the scaffold with Percy. Yeah, and yeah. Chuck. <laughs> I'd gotten I was probably, promoted by I was that supervising point. somewhere. <laughs> Obviously, very carefully laid out. <laughs> yeah, that uh, worked there. Yeah, uh, Chris, when you uh, look at that soffit up there, that's the work of Percy Hawkins and friends. That's why it's held up so well all these decades. Wow. Kevin, you get into lots of pictures. <laughs> you must have had to work there every Saturday. Just about, just about. And uh, there's uh, Mike again and Jim and this chap. I This one, Phil. Uh, George. Kevin, you help us there. I think that was. Oh, yeah, George Sipniewski. George Sipniewski. No, that's not George. No. That looks like Ray Ingersoll. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. He was one of the kids who's, who worked uh, at the beginning and then kind of disappeared too. Yeah. Well, he. Uh, some we yeah. haven't kept track of, but we certainly have the uh, Vince Rash and Bob Bouvet, another very, very big oh, yeah. <laughs> person in there. And this is Tom Strickwerda. Kevin, again, you're in the, oh, you really hog the camera, man. <laughs> and there's George Sipniewski. What a, what a delightful person he was. Mm -hmm. yep. Big, big Polish kid. He was very popular with everybody. And he, we did find him, thanks to Jim uh, Farish's detective work. Oh, good. We think we found the right one, and he's, he was sent an invitation. I do know he was here for our 30th in 2000. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who's the guy sitting down to the right of me there with the white shirt on, the white t-shirt? This guy. Yeah. I do remember his name. His name was Don Schenken. And hmm. the reason I do remember is that he went with me to the solar eclipse in 1970. He was one of the people in my car. Hmm. 
You would all recall that eclipse. Some of you went on there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we went different places, but yeah. We ended up down in Georgia, and then we flew through the night to North Carolina. And he was a, kind of a quiet young man, very, very nice. Hmm. Could have stayed in Georgia. It cleared up. <laughs> yeah. Here we are putting the, uh, the first major telescope in, in its very early stages. <clears throat> it's a framework of the original telescope. Many of you will recognize this, Bob Cash will. Mm -hmm. And here's a group photo, a fellow by the name of Joe Gustin, who yeah, was yeah, yeah. stalwart in the club and did a lot of the machine work. He was a retired machinist. So he did work uh, building the telescope. And this is Cusin, right? Yeah, Don Cusin. Oh, yeah. Don Cusin. Yep. That's Andy Fraser on the bottom right. Yeah, Andy Fraser. Yep. He was one of the people I went to South America with for the uh, uh, just a couple of years ago for the South American trip. Here's Bob, Percy, Charlie. I think you know hey, the rest. You, Here's, do, we have, do you have any pictures of uh, Jeffrey Bohr when he was? Uh, uh, you know, that question gets asked. I was never, I, he did not work a lot of the Saturdays. Hmm. He did contribute, but he was not one of the stalwarts. So I never did have a picture of him working on the observatory, to tell you the truth. That's disappointing to me. I feel yeah. sometimes like I'm the only person who remembers him being out there. I, I do remember him. Um, he? Yeah. he was a very quiet kid. He was, yeah. Yep, yeah, kind of bashful, mm -hmm. reserved. Uh, but yeah, but he worked hard when he was yes, there. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was a good worker. This yeah. is the observatory, and I think Bob Bowler took this picture. Maybe there it has it has no roof. Yeah, there's no roof on it. <laughs> Did you take that, Bob? I don't. I don't know. I, I don't remember. I know you took the picture of the comet that's coming up. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was. The, the reason right I threw this one in the Astronomical League Convention in 1968. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. Is uh, the, the league uh, had a um, various sectionals, geographical sectionals. And the speaker, the featured speaker, was uh, Richard Teske from the University of Michigan. And I actually studied under him when I was at the university, when he was up at Macbeth Halbert. Uh, and even though I would, I would not be considered a friend of him, I knew who he was and I had worked with him on a, on a couple of occasions. Mm -hmm. And he was invited to come to speak to this conference and then we invited him back to be our dedication speaker. Mm -hmm. Here is G.M. Ross right there. Yep. Where? And this is oh. the only picture I have, a backside, uh, back of the head picture of uh, Maureen Hawkins. Here. Oh, wow. No. No. Lot. Here's Bob. Here's Kevin again. Boy, Kevin, you uh, where's Waldo? Pardon? I said, where's Waldo? Waldo. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, joke. Never mind. Oh, Somebody I got it. It. I'll follow you. Okay. Uh, it takes me a while to catch up. Another person who was very, very significant, he was a president during. Uh, a later period, I don't think during the time the observatory was built, but he was a, a stalwart in the construction. Do you know who this person is? This man, uh, well, it is labeled there, Dave. Oh, <laughs> 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 yes. Okay, well, it's getting late. We're moving along. <laughs> Ellis, Ellis was a great worker and um, a, a stalwart in the organization. Another one of those people that was not high profile but you just counted on him to work. Talk about a worker. <laughs> Abby, you knew this picture was coming, didn't you? Yes, and didn't yeah. we beg you not to show it? Pardon me? <laughs> over and over. I thought we begged you not to show this. Oh, I'm sorry, okay, we're gonna move on. <laughs> Bob Bouvet, <laughs> who is also a, a very, very skilled individual with a lot of different <clears throat> uh, skills. I think he was a electronics technician. Back in the days when you fixed television sets uh, that had tubes. You remember your old Zenus and your RFCAs? Bob was a, a technician. Yeah, more, yeah, more than one tube back in those days. <laughs> hmm? 
Yeah, and he lived in well into his 90s. Um, 98, I believe. Yeah. I just yeah, checked because uh, we have a memorial bench in his honor, and I oh, was just checking I, the birth dates uh, to put the mm -hmm. plaque on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds right. And yeah. Here we are with the observatory getting near the point where we're about ready to paint it. There's the truck uh, that you were talking about, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The truck, the old international. The rash kids get in there again, kind of hamming it up. Many of us. So you worked on a lot of crews, didn't you, Vincent? Uh, we're in a lot, at least in the days we took pictures, you were there. Yeah. Good, good memories, very good memories. Yes, indeed. They were, although I got dog tired at the end of some of those days, those 12 hour days too. And I was young. Here we go, the painting bee. Mm. Oh, right. My OSHA would be having their issues again, especially <laughs> this kid okay. right here. That might be Jack. That might be Bob DeYoung. Mm. Do you recall being part of the painting crew, Jack? I, I do not. No, not not for the building anyway. So I don't I don't think that was Bob DeYoung because he okay. came a little bit after I did. Yeah, I think you, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm not quite sure who that is. This is Bill, I know, and I know who that is. Sandy, you want to make yeah. a comment? <laughs> and all I remember is smell. Uh, you got to get up to your mic though somehow or. <laughs> you hear me now? I uh, all yeah. I remember is that smell of the paint. And yeah. I don't know paint on anything. <laughs> yep. Yeah, well, I remember that too, the smell of latex paint. But probably because I didn't know how to do much else in the building. <laughs> but you were the you were the, one of our chief painters. I guess so. Wow. I, I don't remember this picture. It's amazing. Jack's first appearance. Oh tell us the story, I'm Jack. Summer of 68, or I'm sorry, summer of 69. Yeah, not 69 um, now because yeah, we're finished uh, inside. Uh, Judy uh, doing some painting of the, the, the door area. I, I actually don't remember what board I was uh, cutting, but uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, from my standpoint, much like uh, Vince and Kevin and others uh, who have, uh, jumped in, you know, it was uh, every Saturday morning and uh, for me, it, it, and a lot of us, I think it, it gave us something to look forward to and, and uh, um, certainly neat to be part of something like this that uh, uh, not only did we get a chance to uh, participate, but many of us are, are still involved in the club and mm -hmm. to see how, you know, where, where it came from to where it is now. It's a, it's a great feeling. Yep. It gave us exposure to a set of adults too, you know, that um, had talents, had skills, and just just being around those people, uh, I think, was a great influence on us. At least it was on me. Yeah, I think you're right, Kevin. I uh, well, we we've seen a number of them. I remember working with a gentleman by the name of Ed Billick. Uh, yeah. We were putting, oh, yeah. In, yeah. We were putting the tiles in. Mm -hmm. I think he. Uh, um, as I remember anyway, I think he was one that was doing that. Mm -hmm. oh, I remember it. I have a picture of him coming up. Yeah. Another group photo. I guess we know most of the people in here. We've identified Jeff. This one I'll, I don't think we're ever going to learn. Well, there's Kevin again. <laughs> There he is. <laughs> yep. Got a different shirt on this time. The, the young black kid, I don't remember his name either. It was he first near Zeddy. Club strip with us. Yeah. Though. Yeah, he went in 70. Anyway. Did he go with you, uh, Bob? Yeah, he went with us. Very good. Do you remember his name? Uh, I don't remember his last name. First name was Eddie. Eddie. Okay. Yeah. Dave, who's the guy way over on the right? That would be uh, Beaker, I think. Bob. Oh, okay. Bob Beaker. 
I know his last name was Meeker. Hmm. Okay, Evie. <laughs> 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 Why don't you promise not to explain, show that? Explain what you're doing. Witching for water. Get, go up to the microphone. I was witching for we water. Want this, we want this to be uh, recorded for posterity. And we found water. Because if you're down far enough, you will always get water. Water. <laughs> it Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> well, you did tell them where to dig, didn't you? Yes. And they dug. And they came um, up with they, dug. Well, they, they didn't dig where she um, found the water, though. Uh, they did not dig in the right place? No, well, they did not. There was also a big rock under that mm -hmm. rock. Yeah, they dig down for a ways and then it would hit a rock and you couldn't go any further. Yeah. You notice we were, what were you dealing, d digging about a half inch well pipe? I did that too. <laughs> well, this is how it finally happened. Yeah. <laughs> Dave, who was um, that guy with Bill? Was that Terry Ryder? Terry Ryder. Yep. yep. Uh, we sent him an invitation to the event because he was very active in the club in the 80s. <clears throat> in early 90s. In fact, okay. uh, he worked at Corporate Color and was responsible for those uh, transparencies that are in the main room at the observatory. Mm -hmm. so I'm hoping that we reconnect with him. Observatory being big into photography and uh, yeah, I didn't realize those murals were some of his work. Yeah, I, I've know. lost track of him, but I was quite good friends with him. You notice how close we are to the fence, which was the property. Yeah, yeah that's you know? the property line. And yeah, it's all those little saplings that have now become big trees. <laughs> Dave, twice I drove those wells by hand, and we hit a rock both times. And even that jackhammer could not get through the rock layer. That's where the frustration came from. That's why we went this route. Yeah. <laughs> we had to raise the money to do it, just like we got the money for the latest. And we just drill, drilled a new well. Chris didn't mention that, but we now have a brand new modern well. Mm. <coughs> There's Ed Billick. Yeah. Yeah. He was quite the cat craftsman, too, and, and another nice chap. Yes. Yes, he was. Very nice. <laughs> A lot of, as Kevin alluded to, he, he said that he had a chance to um, mix with, with an older people. I think for me, it was an opportunity uh, to realize just how many really nice people there were in this, this group and how motivated they were. And they still are. And this is my one and only picture of Evelyn Grable, who is the co-founder of the GRAAA. She obviously was not part of the work crews um, because we didn't ask women to do that kind of work in those days. And yet she had a garden club. And as we got into the spring of 1970, now the year of our um, dedication, Evelyn brought her garden club out on a Saturday and then we had a bunch of kids doing the work and she was the supervisor. And, she was a delightful lady, just it was a colleague of mine at the museum and during those years and, and just a, a, a great, great uh, mm -hmm. friend to the yeah. club and to me personally. Mm -hmm. And there she is. It was she and James Veen that got together and, and started the GR to play. Uh, Mark Boyd was going to zoom in. Maybe he has since uh, he, tonight. He said he was going to join us. This is a young Mark Boyd right here. And he was another one of the very significant youngsters in the group, came a little later than the others, but is a contemporary of Jack's. And this is Dan Braybrook over here. Dan Braybrook. Also okay. very active in our yeah. club for quite a while. And this was John Holmquist conducting a mirror grinding class at the museum. I threw that in primarily to show you a picture of young Mark. Mm -hmm. And here we are at the dedication of the observatory uh, in 1970, the spring in Comet Bennett. And this is a photo credit to Bob Muller. 
You got up early in the morning, Bob, didn't you? Oh, uh, sure did. Well, nicely so, done. So, so several mornings, yeah. That was a very, very nice comment. And this yeah. is one of the classic mm -hmm. pictures that we use a uh, lot. That was in uh, spring of 1970, just 70, before the yeah. dedication. Here's dedication day. That is your father, Sandy. Isn't it? No, no, no. No, that's not dad. <laughs> that isn't? Nope, nope. Okay, you would know. A lot thinner. <laughs> yeah, no, that wasn't dad. Okay. I'm thinking he came to the dedication. I, I don't remember, you know. Um, okay, this is Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Donald Chaffee, the uh, parents of the astronaut. Mm. This is Don, this is his wife. This is Mrs. Bohr, Mrs. Alvin Bohr. And that's uh, Al Bohr over here, father of Jeff. Mm -hmm. And oh, notice the road. My whole life. <laughs> notice, notice the well-developed road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This person needs no introduction. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, he's not here. I'm sure he'd have a comment or two. Yeah, he's watching. Me. I think we had close to 200 people mm -hmm. for the assembled group. My parents are in there. I know, right? They're right in there, right there. My mom and dad. I missed a little spot. I'm sorry. Here's Weldon Frankfurt, a museum director. There's Evelyn back here. <laughs> yeah. Where's others? Stu asked me to go out here. Protect you from the rabid raccoon. <laughs> and there's Percy uh, giving anecdotes. This is what he created his famous poem about the night on Kissing Rock Hill. That's why we still call the program Night on Kissing Rock Hill. Black mulch does matter. And here is uh, Mrs. Veen cutting the ribbon with Bob Moeller, who was president at the time. Bob, you want to say anything? Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, that was scored today. I'm sorry? It was quite a day. It was quite a day. It was quite a day, yeah. And this was quite a moving moment when uh, Al and Jane Bohr, uh, we uh, had a uh, remote contact for the dome opening and uh, they opened the dome to reveal the Jeffrey Bohr telescope. Peggy Joe's there. So we do have a picture of Jeff, but that's the only one. Oh, um, that's sad. I remember him there for, for a lot of those weekends. Apparently there wasn't a camera there. And then Dr. Teske gave a very memorable address, just an outstanding address, which is he published that in a uh, the uh, publications of the Astronomical Society of the Pacific, and I actually have copies of it. I, I may actually uh, have those copies made for the uh, event on the 26th. Mm -hmm. so here's the Jeffrey Bohr Memorial Telescope One. Notice the uh, guide scope that we use for photographs was a three inch refractor to start with. There were numerous, uh, numerous uh, other versions. And then here's the Jim Marin refractor in the East Tower, which was the original telescope there. There's Jim observing. Uh, Evelyn, I do have a picture of that now in the light trap leading up to the telescope. This picture right here. <laughs> Evelyn, do you, know, do you know whatever happened to the telescope? 1970. I have dad's telescope here in Arizona. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah Mike, Mike has it. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Yeah. Six inch refractor. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, I remember it. Yep. It was yeah. a Jager's lens, from what I remember Jim telling me at one time. Well, here we are, 19, late summer 1970, quite a transformation from uh, 1968 when there was no building in the middle. And there were no trees in here. <laughs> This is Mark. This is, I'm not sure who this is. 
That may be my, that may be me. This one right here? Yeah. I hope it's so hard to find. Well, yeah, you're in so, there's so few pictures that you're not in, Kevin. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Bob, you took this picture. Uh, uh, not, not, not me. Okay, that's nice. What? I'm not sure where that came from. We did find money. Uh, actually, it was the Bohr family that helped put us in the direction of a foundation run by the Grand Rapids Gravel Company. What? That gave us money to underwrite the cost. Of so we did, by 1971, we were finally able to build the, uh, the finished road to the observatory. Mm -hmm. Here's Jack. Jack, explain how you did your photography in those days. Uh, Dave talked about the three inch refractor. We, uh, uh, we use that as a guide telescope. Uh, we get the object in the, uh, in the field of view, of course, first. Um, uh, most of the time we're doing uh, prime focus type uh, photography. And once we did that, we'd move the uh, guide telescope to a, a fairly bright star and keep it in the crosshairs. And we had a, a small handheld device, as I remember, that uh, allowed you to adjust it if, if the clock drive wasn't keeping, uh, keeping up with, uh, um, with the rotation of the earth. So I, uh, I, di I didn't take a lot of photos, but uh, mm -hmm. one of them I, I do have, and uh, somebody uh, again, that was very, uh, 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 I got to know was a very important person for me in that, uh, during that time was Tom Strack. And, uh, Tom brought me out and we took a, a picture of M27, the Dumbbell Nebula, black and white, you know, old uh, film, obviously, uh, photograph, and uh, I still have that, but uh, that was, uh, uh, Tom was also, I know he was involved in building the observatory, and I probably know Tom best from riding with him um, uh, down to, to the clubs in, um, in 70, I think, and also was it in uh, 72, the ill fated uh, trip up to Canada? We have, um, I, I, he's another very significant person that we don't have many pictures of for some reason. But of course, we have a very special award named after him uh, because he died prematurely young as well as Jeff Bohr did. And I, I do have a picture coming up of the 25th anniversary, and I think it's coming quite soon. And maybe it'll be, we can talk a little bit more about him then. I'm going to just quickly go through some of these. There's Bob Bouvet observing with the six. There's Mark Christensen. Are yeah. you still with us? <laughs> Is Mark still with us? No, maybe he's departed. He had enough. That's your uh, younger brother, Jack. Oh, is that Jim? That's Jim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in that famous uh, silhouette. Yeah. Is that Venus next to the moon? I'm not quite sure who took that picture. And we started having group visits too, right? Shortly after we opened. One of the early group visits. And the junior section was very active, the student group. Ah! No, I think this is Mark Boyd here, but that's Tom Strack right there. So we, do, we have one picture of the back of his head. Oh, jeez. <laughs> his wife, Anita, right here. That's me up in the front row on the left. Uh, I, can tell right by side, I can tell by the yeah. sideburns. <laughs> this is uh, Braybrook, Dan Braybrook over here. Oh, yeah. mm, yeah. Kids wore their hair long in those days. <laughs> This is another group in the late 70s. And this is somebody who is still very active in the club. In fact, he was the one of the first uh, Strac Award recipients. Know who that is? Which hey, one? Everyone? In fact, I thought he was uh, zoomed in tonight, but he isn't. It, it you don't is, know who that is? Dave Dorimo, right? Dave Dorimo, yeah. Oh, oh, of course. And. Uh, Bill Sanders, are you still here? Yeah. I there you see. are. Yeah, I see, Dave. Your cameo and then in your buddy, um, 
that would be uh, Keith, right? Keith, Keith Snedeker. Yeah. Do you, do you hear anything at all from him? Oh, yeah. He's a professor in Utah. In Utah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A young man by the name of Chris Nunn. And I'm not sure who this young lady is. Anybody help us there? No. This guy, this guy showed up at the observatory one night and said, oh, do you remember me? My name's Tom Steele. Oh, of course I remember you. He was in the club in the 70s too. Quite young in this picture. So I think 70s, early 80s. He was a junior president at one point, I believe. And I think is in banking. So he's still around. Another group. Yeah, probably. That's your, that's your this one. Little hard to uh, look at all those. Uh, look at that uh, landscaping. <laughs> we, we've yeah. improved it since then. You see me, Dave? So, are you in there? Yeah. Bill? Standing in the doorway. Oh, that's you. Yeah, I used to be thin. <laughs> okay. Well, that is you. Okay. Yeah. You uh, This is Keith, right? I think so. Yeah, it looks like him. And that's Chris. Okay, we'll move on. This was a later version of the guide scope. And then we're coming to the, here we go, Bob Montel observing, taking photographs using the the, I think, eight inch uh, cast grain, but here's the one I wanted to point out. Yeah. That's on the uh, front page of the B section of the Grand Rapids Press, a young Bill Sanders mm -hmm. with his friend Bob Montel and the suspected variable star. Did that, that something happened in that story? Can you tell it briefly? It's not suspected. I mean, it's a, it's a, Gosh, I can't even remember the type, but it's the kind of variable star that has a lot of very large sunspots on one side. What is it called? CV something uh, variable stars. Uh huh. And it was actually confirmed right here. I guess so, that night. Hmm. Congrats. Well, that's our, 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 main, our main claim to research fame. Yeah. This was when we were helping Percy Hawkins with some yard work. And here's Jack and Sherry, um, a young man, I, again, I, I think Mike somebody. And this was Andy Oros. That Mike Baraboo? Baraboo, that's the name, the last name, yes. Yeah, oh. he's, a face, he's a Facebook friend of mine right now. Oh, cool. Because I've lost track of him. And this is John Truex, who's still director of the planetarium over in Muskegon, I believe. Have you, you had any, any of you guys had any dealings with him at all? Yes, he's, uh, he's on my Facebook page as well. And uh, we exchange uh, likes on occasion. Okay. Mike Steele. And Ken Bond, who was one of the eclipse Erica. with us in 91, correct? Will you remind her to keep my door shut? Yeah, I'm sorry. You know? yeah. Okay, I'll see you. <laughs> and here's the Percy Hawkins in 1983. This is version one. And that's when we had uh, John Dobson as the dedication speaker. I didn't put any pictures in of him, but I think I have some somewhere. We had some pictures of him because he's pretty famous. And he actually came and was the dedication speaker at our opening uh, ceremony. And he did not speak about his telescope. He spoke more about his cosmological theories. And he went on and on uh, and on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We he had him there. up in Traverse City too. He's quite the fellow. Quite the fellow indeed. <laughs> yeah. And here's version two in the 90s. Um, and that's the one with the rocker panel. And I think Craig Preeby built this version. 
which is still the one we have today. Really? Basically. Huh. But the housing is different. And here we are to our uh, 25th year, because we're getting along in time here. So I'm going to just jump through these fairly fast. This is more recent history. And that, that was when we had something pretty significant happen too. On the 25th anniversary, we didn't donate or uh, dedicate any new telescopes. Um, that was the era when John Irwin was president of the club and he's still very active and has been helping us some with our, our planning project and uh, our, our long range planning. So he's still with us and you, you see him at some of the public nights. <laughs> Here's a young version of Mike Murphy and Kevin Young, who of course has been a very significant person in the history of the club and who contributed a lot to our leadership uh, back in the uh, um, 1990s and 2000s, up to about 2008 or so. He was, he was one of the real, real uh, workhorses in the organization. That's the crowd. Pretty big crowd. We hope to match that now that we don't have any limits on outdoor meetings uh, coming up. And this is the latest version of the uh, Smith Cass, or I'm sorry, of the Hawkins uh, Newtonian at uh, the 95 event. And Andrew Harwood. He was one of the, also one of the uh, prestigious recipients of the STRAC award. And Jack, tell us a little bit more about that. STRAC award? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, you Tom helped again, promote that, I believe. Uh, Tom, Tom again was uh, a mentor to many of the junior folks, including me. And um, uh, Tom, Tom passed away call the year, but he um, passed away unexpectedly. And one of the things that uh, um, he always talked about was trying to trying to get you to do something above and beyond what you what you thought you could do. And so we, we came up with the idea of coming uh, of developing in a Tom Strack um, Excellence in Astronomy Award. And um, uh, we put that together. And uh, I don't know how many recipients we have. I know there's a uh, plaque downstairs, I think, in the library still that has all the uh, award winners. Uh, uh, Bill Sanders, I know you're on there. Uh, you said Dave DeRimo was on there. Um, Correct. So anyway, it, it's a, it was a very uh, uh, originally, or it, it was designed for a junior uh, member. And uh, many, uh, you know, there's, there's a bunch of folks that did uh, some exemplary work, and uh, they're, they, they were recognized with uh, the Astronomy uh, Excellence in Astronomy Award. And there so, they are. <laughs> this was in 1995 when Michelle Stark became the latest recipient. And I did email her to invite her to come this evening. She couldn't make it, uh, but they may come up for the 26th. She's a, now a professor of astronomy at uh, University of Michigan Flint. And to her immediate right is uh, Andy Harwood, who was one of the uh, earlier recipients, probably in the early 90s. Uh, Mrs. Strack, right in the middle, that's Tom's mother. Uh, Dave Stiskevich, are Dave, are you still with us? He was out there, I saw his name on the participant. Um, he, got, he was co-recipient. Uh, Michelle and Dave won the same year. We had two really outstanding people that year in the mid 90s. And uh, John Truex has won it. Uh, I'm thinking Paul Johnson, I remember. So it's, it's, a, it's a very significant award and it's still out there. And the most recent recipient is also the brand new daddy. Jake, are you still with us? Yeah, I'm here. There he is, our most recent recipient. <laughs> so, so Dave, here's the uh, first Tom Strack Award. Can you see it? Ah, you got it. Yes, I, I saw... did. We, we did mention you, didn't we? Yeah, you did. Okay. This, is, this says 1978. 
So I've carried this around since. Wow. Cool. <laughs> cool. And you and Dave were co recipients that year, weren't you? That's right. Yep. So we had co recipients for the first award, and then we had two in 95 as well. Cool. We're still looking for more. <laughs> but the youngsters have not been the predominant people carrying the load in, in recent years. Even though we got lots of kids in the club, uh, it isn't. <laughs> it isn't the uh, uh, what shall we say do-it-yourself projects that attract them like it used to, and, and in some ways that's too bad because all of the young people that received this award would almost to a person, together with so many of them that have grown up and are with us this evening, would say that this experience was something that was very significant in their lives. Yeah, but Dave, you got to remember, many of us had you as a mentor during that time. Who is that? And we might have not. It's the scavage. Oh, hello, David. You are out there. Okay. Yeah. And many of us wouldn't have earned it without your leadership. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Yeah, amen to that. Uh, I, I, I would love to pass that torch. <laughs> but uh, it's, it was very rewarding working with all of you wonderful people, without a doubt, to a person. And here's Jim Farish. Are you still with us? I'm here. I told you I was going to show a picture of you when you were a little bit younger. But <laughs> nevertheless, no less enthusiastic today than you were then. Yes, indeed. And that is a true statement. Jim is one of the more just oh shucks people in this organization. Mm. <coughs> Oh, me. And so it's time to put a new telescope in. So now this is 2000. We've retired the 12 and a half inch telescope, but it was sent down to the museum. It was reconditioned. And Bob Cash and Jim Ashley, if you go, uh, Google or go to the Stephen F. Wessling Observatory, sfwesslingobservatory.com, you will see a picture of our telescope. It's up near Fremont, all reconditioned, and it is now the Raymond B. Larson Memorial Telescope. So gone, but far from forgotten. And this was the dedication of the Jeffrey Moore II telescope in 2000. That's kind of bringing us up to today. We're not gonna go much longer with this. You notice it, it's had quite an evolution of guide scopes too. Seems like some of the different pictures, uh, each one had a little different telescope on it. But it was a state-of-the-art telescope in 2000. I am very pleased to tell you, those of you that joined us after we began, that Mark Christensen has finally figured out our park problem. We think we're just fine. I have the reconditioned controller. And we're thinking now that we're going to have this telescope working the way it should be after a year of trying to figure it out. You'll hear more about that very soon. And here was the ceremony in which we also dedicated, rededicated the Hawkins with the new rollaway shed uh, that was designed by Craig Preby and Dave DeRimo. So that was part of this ceremony, uh, which took place in uh, June of 2000. That was a big reunion. I, I think this is Sandy right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Andy, you helped engineer that. Are you you're still with us? I am. Yeah, remember that big deal that we had at Cannonsburg and then we had a celebration here? Yes, I remember. You and Alex Marotsky. Uh-huh. And others? Yeah, I can't remember all the details, but it was a huge big deal. I remember. Yeah, and I, I really felt good that you did that. Uh, well, we, As many a human being would have noticed that many of the phony businesses were farms in New Jersey with names like Ritter Wheat Club, Dealey Nuts, Tomato Cranber, Seaweed Blyman, and my favorite, Beefy King. Of course, the fake farms also gave fake addresses, but not in we, uh, Where is this coming from? They were in New Jersey beach towns. The Beefy Cattle Ranch turned out to be the home of Joe. Can we get rid of that? <laughs> oh, that's, that's the danger of Zoom. Wow. <laughs> needs to mute. <laughs> okay, and here's the Hawkins telescope in June of 2000. Now, pretty much as it is today. 
Because I think that picture was more recently. Here was one of the speakers. 16-year-old Jake. Jake, you look a little different. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he was uh, the latest of the Strack Award recipients. What, what, what year was that, Jake? This would have been 2000 at the 30th uh, anniversary. I was, I, I was given the honor of re rededicating the Bohr telescope. Oh, wow. Nice. You were, yes, you were one of the principal speakers, weren't you? <laughs> a very poised young 16 year old, I might add, with red hair. Don't know if that's significant. Finally, the Marin telescope as it existed in the 80s. And now the Marin telescope as it exists today, named in honor of uh, Jim and Evelyn. It is theoretically a robotic telescope. I will leave it at that. <laughs> it's still something we're trying to realize its full potential. But a fitting, fitting honor for the people who helped make Veen Observatory a reality, without a doubt. Yeah. So, Evie, thank you. And thank you to Jim, who's looking down, hopefully, for all that you put up with <laughs> over a lot of years. That, that's a great picture, Evie. Yeah. No, it is. Thank you to some yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, the plaque is now on the door to the telescope, too. And there's going to be a sign over the door by June 26th. It's being mm -hmm. made. This, at least the telescope is set up so we can run it from the, the library mm -hmm. robotically. So in the winter, this becomes a very nice situation where the observer can be downstairs uh, running the telescope and not up there freezing in the dome. So we got into that point, even though we can't run it off site yet. And here we are in 2007, fresh coat of paint. Here's our sort of signature picture that Jeff Dickerman took. We'll find that on many of our publications and our brochure for the public nights. And I'm going to finish up by saying that in capital campaign phase one, we were able to, due to great generosity on the part of the Marins who uh, sold us this property at an incredibly reasonable price, we were able to purchase uh, 12 acres and we were able to create um, within the woodlands that have been built up since this picture was taken, we think this picture was a flyover by uh, one of our members, Doug Perdue, who had a, a pilot's license. And so probably in the early 80s or late 70s, before all of this growth occurred in here. And part of that campaign was the upgrading of the uh, That's me. West yeah. Dome. This is Jim. Not too sure who this is. We'll, we'll quickly pass on. This is uh, Joe Bronk, who's one of the leaders in the club at the present time, and a couple of technicians from uh, Ash Dome who are here to supervise the project. That's just last fall. This is very recent. This is uh, our president, Chris Miller, and Joe uh, doing the remake of the Hawkins Shed. They did some uh, revamping of wood that had, had deteriorated, and now it's like new again. And uh, that's one of our important projects in the capital campaign. Chris alluded at the beginning of the show of uh, some of the wonderful things we have planned for the next few years. And I'm particularly um, pleased, I guess, and, and very humbled that the trail system is going to bear my name. And this is a picture in the north uh, area of the trails, the North Trail near sunset. This is a, just an absolutely delightful place to go to over the next several months near sunset because the shadows in here are just magical on the North Trail. And then this is a kind of a signature picture on the South Trail, one of our natural sculptures and the Evelyn Grable Memorial Bench up here on the, uh, on the pinnacle. This is absolutely my favorite place to just sit and, and contemplate how great life is and how great it's been with so many of you people as part of it. And I, I thank you for uh, 
allowing me to share that journey with you and to reminisce this evening. It's, it's, it's just been a delightful experience. Um, any of my other co-panelists or any of you that played a part in this history that would like to make some closing comments, go right ahead. Okay, I have something. And Aubrey can help me with that. Mm -hmm. um, the neighbor, Michael Talbot, which a few of you knew, played a prank against the observatory from a very oh. early time. Remember that, Aubrey? Oh, yeah, Elias Green. Yep. Ah, thank you for the name. But uh, before I start with that, Dave, I am the earliest uh, child laborer at the observatory because I was there at the dedication and started digging immediately. <laughs> when I was oh, at the groundbreaking, you mean? Yeah, at the groundbreaking. When yep. I was building, yeah, you're in that early picture. You're. I, I don't. Yeah. I have evidence that you're telling the truth. Okay. When I was digging the basement for the main dome, I helped Mike Talbot, who took a page from a hundred-year-old book and wrote a wild story about the treasure of farmer Elias Green being buried nearby. <clears throat> and I planted it in the hole. I gave it to Ray Larson, who then took it to the museum and it disappeared for 30 years at one of Gary's Yule Burns <clears throat> about 20 years ago. I found out that Ray Larson had spent 30 years looking for Elias Green's treasure. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a, that is an interesting story. That's this sad. is at the Grand Rapids Museum. Ray said that he left it there at the museum. So I know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well. We thought it disappeared without a trace. And Aubrey can confirm that Mike Talbot did this. Yeah, that was definitely his idea. Um, we just helped a little. <laughs> I had to say I helped a lot because you guys kept missing the the map. <laughs> I had to pull it out of the dirt and give it to you. Right, I had to keep replanting the clues for you, but uh... yes. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Any other panelists that want to add anything? Sure. Well, I uh, think that uh, at the dedication. Uh, one of the things uh, I said was that if uh, uh, GRAAA in the observatory was a success, that it would never be completed. And I think I was prophetic in that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, and, and we are, as we come to this very, very big milestone, I think as Tom Good said, this is our Jubilee year and it's a very special moment. It also is a chance for those of us that are on our way out of the picture to leave a, a, a vision for those of you that will bring it to conclusion. I know that Mark Daneman is now uh, with us. Mark's just come aboard. And he's one of those people who has been very visionary, a uh, fairly recent addition to our board, but somebody who has uh, made us look ahead to what this place still has the potential to become in the in in decades to come and you'll be hearing more about that at the at the big reunion at, on the 26th thanks dave you're I'm welcome i'm not going to give you a chance to say nope, much tonight. i'm not going to say anything <laughs> we're already way past our our time but we really appreciate the fact that you are making us think about what could be and uh, are act actively involved in, in finding the money that will get us there. Yeah, you got a big job ahead of you. <laughs> Can I make one comment too? Sure. I, I, I've been probably absent more than I've been present, but when I was- Can you get up there? I'm, oh, I'm gonna yeah. step out in just a second so you guys take over, but I'll be right back. Okay. All right, I, I will say that in the beginning, I think that belonging to this club has meant a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And in my case, as a kid who just never fit in anywhere, and it's debatable whether I even do today, I always mm -hmm. felt as though the astronomy club offered me a place to kind of grow and learn with people and surround myself by very, very intelligent people. 
And one of the things that I learned then and that I, I swear by is that the mark of an intelligent person is a keen sense of humor. And I learned by looking around me at that wonderful club as I was growing up that they did have a wonderful sense of humor and they were so intelligent. It just went together. I've got tons of great memories growing up, really funny things that happened that you didn't talk about, like what Roy Van Huysen did to Dave's car one time. And oh my gosh, all kinds of things. <laughs> that I know um I, you know I was kind of at the ground floor and very very quiet but observed everything loved the planetarium and how it just gave me a an escape every Saturday morning to ponder that universe I think I saw it more poetically than scientifically and that was the, kind of the challenge for me but the music that Dave played was always it was always so fitting and so classical it was just the place where I belonged and the place that took me in. And thank you. Hmm. This is Aubrey and I would just like to thank my mom, especially for her early interest in astronomy, her taking classes in college in astronomy and bringing that to our whole family and talking us into joining the astronomy club back in, I don't know, I think 1960 or so and um and really developing that um interest in all of us and i i'm so grateful that she had that early interest and it became what our family became so thank you mom i didn't even have to pay her <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that later yeah <laughs> I'll was, take payment too. <laughs> and, and uh, I'd sometimes like to, you oh, don't know oh, who you're so influencing. You would say as a mom. Yep. Club. Yes, I'd mom. like to jump in. Well, it's like and, I saw the, that they were going to meet. They used to put that sort of thing in the newspaper. Right. And I noticed it and said, hey, we've got to go to this thing. <laughs> and so we did. Yeah. I'd like yeah. to jump in over my mother and say mm -hmm. that I will be coming to Michigan in June and I will be there for the event at the end of June. And I will be bringing DVD copies of Murder at the Observatory and <laughs> Aliens <laughs> at the Observatory. The uh, classic drama. <laughs> yeah, for anybody who doesn't have theirs. Uh, yes, if you want to see now. the the embarrassment of the neighborhood, I've got copies. <laughs> Yeah, I always wondered wanted... why why you wrote me out of the script early on. I was the first to die. Can you explain that? <laughs> <laughs> well, wasn't I'm that your to... request, Dave? I, I don't. I, I thought I was such a good actor, and then the talent went wasted because I died very soon. Well, the the writer and director has since passed on, so we may never know, Dave. Okay. <laughs> I, I would also like to give a shout out to Tony Deal, who's murdered twice in these movies. Yes. <laughs> His yeah. artwork is in the background of the dedication. He did a Zodiac for yeah. around the parking oh, lot. That's right, in the back of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that was yeah. done by Tony Deal. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. um, Some of you don't know what we're talking about, but it's it's he's bringing DVDs, so you should always have to have one of those for historical. Yes. <laughs> They're very funny, reason. we promise. Um, it's worse than you can imagine. <laughs> yes. It's like a, a it's like a plan nine from outer space. It's Ed like, Wood. I, I, I think it's good. Good. You young people that are here tonight, you think, how did I ever get involved with a group like this? These people are, <laughs> some of the old people, we were just, uh, we were crazy. Mm -hmm. Yep. No, but, just some of them, like Gary. <laughs> if you want copies of the DVD, um, let Mike know, because we want to make sure we have enough for everybody who wants one. Um, so just... You know, give Mike a, a message just so we can make sure we have enough. Yeah. I promise and, they're very funny and they're worth it. And, uh, 
and you get to watch the Brian die. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry and Gary Ross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all kinds of people, you know. Um, yes. So. Well, we can yeah. uh, we can offer a platform for it, Aubrey and, and Mike, uh, since we uh, appear to own the rights to this film. You know, we can transcribe it and we can post it on our uh, YouTube channel. I was gonna say, is it on YouTube yet? What? We can, no, we can get it there, Jim. What? Yep, there are those are... of us in the group that can uh, make that happen. I will say that it was very popular with the Hubble Space Telescope group while they were sitting on the ground with the Hubble Space Telescope, waiting for it to launch. It was very popular. <laughs> oh, <there. laughs> hmm. Um, it's out there. Okay. Chris, Chris, Chris we're going to turn it over to you. Okay. Well, thank you all. Uh, I appreciate that, Dave, and everyone that's contributed to this. Wow. It's, you know, a lot of, uh, it was nice to have the photographs. I mean, they actually give you, uh, you know, they help frame the, uh, the discussion and also to see, you know, wow, was that really me? <laughs> and, uh, and that appreciate that. So uh, thank you. Um, I assume, yeah, we will also um, have available. Yeah, we'll be fortunately he put you know, archiving that file as a PDF as well and make sure that available. Which one is heavy? So um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks everyone. We had you know, we had up to thirty nine participants this evening. That was uh, a terrific attendance. Um, Chris, I, I think Jim, Jim Ashley, do you still have something you want to show for those that want to hang on? Jim? Yeah. He had to, he just signed off, Dave. Oh, he, he gave up on it. Okay. Oh. It was just wonderful having uh, some of our, our, our long lost friends here. Uh, Bob Cash, did you have that? I say that again, Dave. Uh, Jim was going to show something that you were doing. Oh, I don't know. He texted me just now from uh, California. I'm in Arizona. He said that he had to go get his daughter. Oh, okay. So I think okay, so I will have to catch that at a later time. But thanks for joining us. Great to see you, all of you from far off. Bill Sanders and and uh, uh, definitely Mike and Aubrey. Uh, I see you guys a little more frequently, but. Uh, those of you yeah. from afar, and we know that you can't all join us on the 26th, but uh, you'll be there in our, our thoughts, and we're so happy that you were with us this evening. Thank, thanks for inviting us, Dave, and good to see yes. everyone. Yeah. If, if you can stay up for the next half hour, I'm going to be starting at 6.30 Arizona time okay. and talk on my cos, uh, concepts in cosmogony. Okay. I know it's late there. <laughs> but it's well worth it. Thank you, man. And I yep. wish all of you a good night. I'll be seeing many of you very soon. In yep. just a couple of weeks. Week. And Jake, uh, we uh we we I'll be talking to you about participating in the event on the 26th. I'll be good to I I good to catch up in person. Yeah. Yeah, great to hear that you're going to make an effort to come. I know you're a busy guy these days. <laughs> How's the sleeping going? Great. I was well trained. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, congratulations. It really is an incredible thing. Being a father is, I'm sure, very special. <laughs> Dave, I've become president of the Phoenix Astronomical Society. I remember oh. visiting there once. Yes. On one of your meetings. Excellent. We're very busy. Good. All right. Now I have to prepare for my talk. Okay. And good night, everybody. And again, thank you, panelists. And okay. Thank you. Good night. Andy. Thank you. 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 Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Right. Sign out. Okay. Take care. Be well. All right. Oops. Stop the recording. <laughs>